everyone and welcome back to my studio, The Pottery Corner, down on the south coast of England near Chichester. Welcome back. Um, as you can see today we're in the kiln room, so I'm doing a glaze kiln fire opening. Um, not a very long one today, it's been extremely busy in the studio um, with the you know, real students, real bodies of people in the studio, so it's been mad and um, they've been producing lots of wonderful work. Um, there are a couple of bits of students' pieces in this kiln, so interesting. That'll make a nice change. So um, the kiln was cold as of last night. It's down to 13 degrees centigrade, so I'm going to turn off the kiln supri uh, supply um, and flick the kiln open. Now you know, if you know me well, that I've had just the tiniest sneaky peek. Um, and in the top of this kiln, I was actually going to just show you how tight this piece um, is in terms of space in the kiln. So as you can see, I'm really, uh, I am really pinching space that it isn't there. But this is the top of my um, fountain piece, the base of which came out of the previous um, kiln opening. So this is the top section. Um, and as I say, I have, um, you know, literally very small amounts around the actual piece. So I really am using my kiln to its capacity. Um, so this is now cold. Um, and indeed, I do have a little bit of trouble getting my hands in either side to lift it out. But we shall do so. And it's very heavy. Um, so I'm just going to inch my fingers out and lift Oh, lift the whole thing out. Um, I reglazed this. Um, initially, I put some underglazes on it and a clear glaze over the top, but I wasn't really terribly happy with it. And obviously, on a big piece like this, um, my option is to reglaze it. So that's what I did. And you'll know if you've watched my previous um, videos on how to reglaze glazed work. Um, we spray it with hairspray, let it dry, not so that it's soaking wet, but give it a layer of hairspray so that the, the glaze has got something to ad adhere to. Um, and then put your glaze over the top and let it dry um, between coats. And it will take a long time to dry because, of course, the clay is no longer porous because it's already been through the kiln once. So this is the top section of my turtle water feature, um, which I'm going to put a solar... Um, fountain in so it needs no wires this has got a lot of applique on it as you can see it's very heavy um, with lots of sort of um, coral sprigs um, that I made from the coral that I picked up on the beach um, when we were lucky enough to go to Barbados um, in January 2020 before before coronavirus kicked off so I've added some some fish and tried to make it look like a coral reef and actually the glazes that I used over the top of the original underglazes were um, Amoco Sky, Amoco Textured Turquoise and our favourite seaweed and that's why it's done all this lovely dripping so I'm very pleased with that. Oh, even if it does do me back in. Um, so this is the base section that came out of the um, the kiln a few weeks ago. Um, this also has a turtle on it and again decorated with the coral motifs and again the same glazes, I've used the same glazes on both pieces and then what I need to do, oh goodness me, I'll tell you what you get good guns when you're a potter, <coughs> is this section will fit into the top of here and I might need to do a little bit of dremeling to get it to fit so that piece goes on the top of there like so and as I say there'll just be a little bit of dremeling to get the two pieces to fit um, but that's how it will look when it's finished so a big piece and I'm glad it's come through the kiln safely right so that's top shelf luckily for me the um, seaweed behaved itself on the um, on the shelf and there are well, in fact there's only one one little drip on my shelf so that's fortunate as we know seaweed's one of those 
it's a fantastic Amoco seaweed is one of those fantastic glazes that moves a lot um, which is fine if you want it to but not so fine when it drips on your kiln shelves right props out now in the middle of here I have just um aha that's interesting right okay see I have to share my I have to share my goods as well as my bads with you um now this is a dish that I glazed I threw it on the wheel and I glazed it with um an amico um glaze I think they're called jungle gems I think it's called um lemon and lime this one anyway when it came out of the kiln the first time there were lots and lots of pinholes around the glass where it had pulled on this section here so I thought to myself I'll just pop that back through and it's got Amoco downpour on the back but I've put it back through and look ouch nasty so that's just taken the whole of that base section off now this glaze on the back here doesn't look to me like it's moved so quite why it's done that, I am not sure. But obviously, that's a real shame because it's a big piece um, and obviously far too damaged for me to do anything with that. I could use it just for decoration because you're not going to see that when it's sat on my side with some fruit in it, but I can't sell it. So that's disappointing. And not only, but also has made a rather nasty mess of the said kiln shelf. Now, I have a new student called Fern and she um wants to make a dinner service so um she's been trying out some decoration techniques on some test tiles um just so that she knows what she can achieve when she comes to actually making her plates which is a very very good idea if you're doing a big project um it's a good idea to do that so this one she's used a stencil um, and then we've painted some slip on, coloured slip. Um, and actually, that is really nice. I really like that effect. So you can see that the um, slip is almost slightly raised. So we've put the stencil on the clay, rolled it down so that it's absolutely flat, and then painted the slip across the top. So that is really lovely. I really like that. Um, and there's another version of that in a different colour. Um, not quite so successful in that colour, slightly sort of dusty blue, but nice nonetheless. And a great effect, it would look it would look lovely on a dinner set. So those are really good. And then she's been playing with oxides. This one is chrome oxide, so this is unglazed uh, chrome oxide and then um, with a clear glaze over. Because of course she wanted to leave some of the, um, the backs of the plates with... Um, you know, just oxided clay. Hmm. For a dinner set that's going to be used and washed a lot, my advice would be to actually glaze it rather than leave it unglazed. So that's why she's just been trying the different oxides. This is um, obviously cobalt. And again, that's cobalt with clear glaze over. And we have a little textured um, stamp that does this stippling, which is quite nice because then of course the oxide holds. So cobalt is always blue. And that one, that was an earring that she had in a sort of a fern pattern. So it's amazing what you can use for texture, as we know. So that again is cobalt. And then this one is copper. This one, we pressed the um, stencil into the clay as before when we put the slip on. But this time she's used copper oxide um, and once it was biscuit fired. So used copper oxide and wiped it back, which is why you've got this lovely um, feel of of the wipe back on there. And that, that's actually really very um, successful as well. I quite like that, um, that effect. And then um, Fern has also done a, um, a glass course, so she bought some glass with her. Now glass, again, um, you know, you're going to have to be careful if she uses glass on something that she's using every day, um, because... It, it, it really should only be used on decorative wear, but we thought we'd try it and see what it came out like. And she might make fruit bowls and things like that that aren't going to be washed every day. So um, that was uh, glass from a, a blue sapphire gin bottle. So those people who know what that is, it's like a sort of a mid, a mid blue colour and actually comes out really lovely like a turquoise colour. So that's really nice. 
Um, and here we've used a textured um, stamp to press into the clay and then she's used the glass over the top. So that's really nice. And then the last one is using the earring press. And again, she brought some bullseye frit in with her. So that's that lovely um, bullseye frit. And that is really beautiful. The green is really lovely and actually very, very fern colored. So those are good. She's coming uh, tomorrow afternoon. So I'm sure she'll be delighted to see those. So at least she can make a decision about how she's going to continue with her project. Now I'll show you this, um, one of my least favourite jobs as you know is dremeling kiln shelves but ha ha ha, aren't I going to have a lovely time doing that one? Nasty. So um, that's not good unfortunately but we will get it off nonetheless, it'll come off. Now in the bottom here, let's just pop that in there, out of the way, let's just get rid of the props. In the bottom um, is one of Karen's leaf plates that she's made. The other one is waiting to be um, ugh, to get in the kiln. So this is the the unglazed fired um, version. So she's put oxide over a leaf and then filled it with some um, with some glass pieces. So that's the larger version of this small one that's in here. Quite interesting to see the unfired and the fired. So this is the fired version. Isn't that pretty? So a lovely leaf that she's used as a press and then um, used copper oxide on the veining and then just popped a little bit of glass on. And interestingly, although the glass may have been blue when it went on, because it's gone over copper oxide, the copper will always change it to green. Um, but nonetheless, isn't that pretty? Lovely. Very nice, Karen, lovely job. Very nice to have my students back making Fantastic pieces again. Um, and then in the bottom of here, there's some more of Fern's um, test tiles. That one is cobalt with no glaze um, over the top. So slightly different, slightly different color as you can see. So this is the glaze, clear glazed and that is without. So again, um, I think she's going to have to put some form of glaze. And then these are um, copper oxide and just, um, just wiped in. So again, unglazed with copper oxide on. And of course, copper oxide will go black when there is no glaze on it. And the last thing in this kiln, and I'm going to show you this before I show you that, although I can't actually see what it looks like. When we were in um, fabulous Barbados, and, and very fortunate to be there, um, I bought this mug. I have a thing. I like to buy other people's mugs. Are you the same? Comment. Do you like buying something when you go abroad or visit places and you see a fantastic mug and, a, and it's great to see other people's studios? So this mug came from Hamilton's Pottery in Barbados and it's red clay. I think it might be earthenware because it's very light. Uh, but I just loved this decoration on here. How simple is that? And I think it's probably just a line of uh, copper oxide and a line of cobalt oxide and it's just... The um, white sort of slightly satin glaze has just pulled it down. So I really liked it. I thought it was wonderful. And as I say, I just like, I like to collect mugs because I like making my own mugs and I appreciate how much work has gone into that. So if the chap at Hamilton's Pottery in Barbados is watching, a lovely mug and, and one that I've um, enjoyed having in my collection. So I thought I'd have a go at sort of using that idea. Um, and this is my... <laughs> This is my interesting attempt. Um, so I've thrown this on the wheel and that is Amoco Snow inside, so it's just white. And then I did a band of copper, sorry, a band of cobalt, which is the blue, and a band of copper. And then I put Amoco Seaweed in the middle. Um, you'll have seen previously that I use um, Amoco Seaweed and um, Amoco's Cobalt Glazes in a different combination, but they come out fairly similar to this. But that's quite interesting. The surface is quite interesting. Uh, I quite I quite like that. It's it's unusual. Got a nice pinhole there if you can see it. But an interesting pull, which is what I was trying to achieve down through the copper with the seaweed to see what happened. Quite nice that. Do you know what I might do with that? Because as you know, most things come out better on a second go. I might 
pop some um, some more glaze on top of this cobalt band, which is a little bit patchy. Um, I might put some um, Amoco cobalt, Celadon cobalt on there and then refire that and we'll see what happens to it. But I think that the, the idea was good. I quite like it, but I think on a second firing it would be even better. So watch out, we might well be seeing this particular mug again through the, through the kiln another time. Right, and that's all that's in there. So um, a quick and easy one today. Um, as I say, the students are back, which is lovely. Um, uh, Etsy store sales are going along very nicely, thank you. So if you wanted to have a look at the Etsy store, there are sets of ceramic stamps in there as well as uh, my finished pieces. So do have a look at my Etsy store, the link's down in the description. And my own website, which is www.thepotterycorner.co.uk. So that's it for today. Um, I'm going to do a uh, catch up on the uh, pins on the world map. Where in the world are you? I've had some fabulous um, replies on that particular video that went out a few weeks ago. Um, and we've got lots of more countries to add, which is just great. I mean, you know, it's just fantastic, as I say every time how wonderful it is to have you here from all across the world. So keep yourselves safe. I hope that the vaccination programme in your country is coming along. We're all fully vaccinated here um, now, which makes life a little bit easier. And obviously the easing of the lockdown is continuing, although we're not quite back to normal yet, but we are getting there. So there is light at the end of the tunnel with hope. Um, so I shall see you all on the next one next week. And in the meantime, keep yourselves safe and well. Bye for now.